Hello everyone, this is our science teacher Tim Martin, and in this video I want to go over the life cycle or evolution of a star. Here we can see a quick diagram showing some of the different stages in the life cycle of a star. Please note, these diagrams are not to scale. To start off with, I'd like to take you out on a cold, star-filled winter night. You may recognize the constellation Orion. I'm not much of a person to talk about constellations, but Orion is one of the more identifiable features in the winter sky. Now, let's focus on the area that is known as Orion's sword, right below the three stars of Orion's belt. Zooming in on this with the telephoto lens, we can see that the center of those three stars, in fact, is not a star. When we look at it even closer through a small telescope, this region here explodes into a whole new dimension with this glowing cloud of gas. So what is a nebula? A nebula is a large cloud of mostly hydrogen gas that is slowly coalescing due to the forces of gravity. When I say large, a nebula such as this one may be many light years across. Here's a professional image of the same region of Orion's sword. We can see that the nebula has quite extraordinary detail. Zooming a little bit more, this central region has been imaged by the Hubble Space Telescope, and we can see this area is full of stars and some dark areas. It's these dark areas where we now know new stars are forming. Some nebulas take on rather unique and interesting shapes. It may come as no surprise that many folks name this one the North American Nebula. This one is known as the Eagle Nebula. Maybe you can imagine an eagle flying to the upper right-hand corner of the image. Again, this has been studied in more detail with the Hubble Space Telescope. In this false color image, we can see these dark areas are areas we know there's thicker amounts of gas in the cloud. It's these areas where new stars are forming. Nebulas are not rare things. NGC 6946, also known as the Fireworks Galaxy, is a collection of several hundred billion stars 10 million light years away. Every one of the pink and red spots in this image is actually a nebula, a cloud where new stars are forming. So on to the formation of the star, the protostar. We'll see that some areas of the nebula are thicker and dark. These areas are places where the gas is coalescing together by gravity. Temperature and pressure are increasing. Oftentimes they may be rotating, forming protoplanetary disks and thus having planet formation around the central star. Here in this nebula, in the constellation Centaurus, we see Thackeray's globules. These are dark regions, again, where we know new stars are forming inside each of those dark regions of the nebula. Imaging with infrared and other wavelengths of light, such as microwaves, in this image from the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, we've actually resolved protoplanetary disks around young forming stars, such as this example of HL Tauri. Here again, we can see several images taken by the NASA Hubble Space Telescope and the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope. They've digitally subtracted out the starlight from the central region of these images, and we can see the disk and possibly planets moving around the central star. It's worth noting now that in 2004, scientists were able to make this first direct image of an exoplanet, or a planet that is not within our solar system. But back to the star. Down in the central region, the protostar may go on to form a main sequence star. When temperatures reach 1 times 10 to the 7, or 10 million Kelvin, that's the temperature where hydrogen fusion begins and a main sequence star is born. This creates tremendous amounts of energy and the outward force of the nuclear explosions is balanced by the intense pressure of gravity and this balance may keep the star active for 10 billion years. Smaller stars may last much longer and larger stars due to the added heat and pressure from the greater mass have a much shorter life cycle. Here we can see a star-filled sky 
And you may recognize this small cluster in the upper center of the region. This is known as the Pleiades. Zooming in again, we can see individual stars resolved. While some of you may not recognize the traditional European name for this star cluster, I'm sure all of you have heard of the Japanese name for this cluster. It's Subaru. Take a look at the front of any Subaru car or truck that you see driving down the road, and you'll recognize this star cluster. As we look around the universe, there's not just thousands or millions, but billions upon billions of main sequence stars, such as we see here as we look towards the center of the Milky Way galaxy. On to a red giant. As the star uses up its hydrogen fuel, pressure and temperature increase, and it may begin fusing helium to carbon in its core. This may take temperatures over 100 million Kelvin. Hydrogen fusion may begin around the core, causing the outer parts of the star to swell and expand. As the outer parts of the star expand, surface temperature drops, giving the characteristic red surface color. The star itself may become 10 to 100 times the size of the sun or even larger. Here's an example of a red giant. Most stars are so far away, all we can see is just a point of light, but they may have a distinctly orange or reddish color. Here's the double star cluster in Perseus, NGC 884 and 869, have several older stars. If you look at this image carefully, you'll recognize several red giants scattered around the star field. There have been a few red giant stars that we've actually been able to image. Antares, at only 550 light years away, is approximately 12 times the mass of the Sun, and its diameter is estimated to be nearly 700 times larger than the Sun. On to a planetary nebula. At first, the star is doing hydrogen fusion, then helium to carbon fusion. When the helium fusion ends, the atmosphere will expand out towards space. Due to the glowing hot core, the atmospheric gases may shine and fluoresce due to the high energy radiation coming from the core. This is the planetary nebula. Here we see Pi 1 Grus, a one solar mass star 530 light years away. We believe that this star is transitioning into a planetary nebula. Its diameter is nearly 700 times larger than that of the Sun. Other planetary nebulas were known to be very distinctive small patches in the sky that often had a round shape, but they did not move like the rest of the planets. This is an image I took of M57 or the Ring Nebula. It pales a little bit when compared to the Hubble telescope view. This enhanced color image shows much of the structure of the area of gases surrounding the remnant star. Here's an image of the Dumbbell Nebula, again a planetary nebula. You can see the star in the center is the one shedding its atmospheric gases. Here we see IC418, another planetary nebula imaged by Hubble telescope, and NGC 6751. Many of these planetary nebulas take on unique and very complex shapes. The shape may tell something about the motions of the star as it was undergoing its final phases of existence. Finally, this image of the Cat's Eye Nebula helps us see that the star may have had some unique rotation as it was shedding its atmospheric gases. For a white dwarf, the nuclear reactions have now stopped. It's no longer generating the energy from the nuclear reactions. Because of this, gravity becomes the dominant force. It's no longer balancing out the outward pressure of the nuclear reactions, so the core itself will collapse, and it may glow until it cools. I have a question mark here because we're not quite sure if this has happened yet. It's estimated that a core of a white dwarf may glow for some time between 15 and 20 billion years. Keep in mind that inside any planetary nebula, we can see the remnant white dwarf, as is indicated by the arrows in these images. There are some star clusters, such as M4, where we see numerous old white dwarfs all of them indicated here with the circles in this image from the Hubble telescope. Finally, let's talk a little bit about the size of a white dwarf. With the extreme size of nebulas and red giants, the white dwarf is actually quite small by comparison. A white dwarf may be just about the size of planet Earth. We hypothesize that a black dwarf may be the final stage in the evolution of a star. It's worth noting that the last product of the nuclear reactions was carbon. 
we know the core has collapsed, we have a very large piece of high density carbon. Now we don't know about this for sure, but it, it's an interesting thing to think about. We know what high density carbon is here on Earth. Maybe that little song wasn't so wrong after all. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, like a diamond in the sky. It is possible that a sun-like star will end its existence as a large piece of high density carbon, maybe a diamond in the sky. One final parting thought. It's worth noting, this was the sequence or the evolution of stages for a sun-like star. Sometimes stars do very interesting things when they die, when they're very large, or when they have companion stars. We'll save these for another video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again on another Earth Science video.